Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise biology topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 2 of topic 14, Coordination and Response. In the previous video, we learned that a stimulus is any change in the environment that can be detected by structures called receptors. Sense organs are groups of receptor cells that respond to specific stimuli such as light, sound, touch, temperature, and chemicals. These are the sense organs and the stimuli they respond to. The skin responds to touch and temperature. The tongue responds to chemicals in food and drink. The nose responds to chemicals in the air. The ear responds to sound and the eye responds to light. Next, you are expected to identify in diagrams and images the structures of the eye. This is the cornea. This is the iris. This is the pupil. This is the lens. This is the retina. This is the fovea. This is the optic nerve. This is the blind spot. These are suspensory ligaments and these are ciliary muscles. Let's learn the function of each part of the eye now. The cornea refracts or bends light when it enters the eye. The iris controls how much light enters the pupil. The lens focuses light onto the retina. The retina contains light receptors, some sensitive to light of different colors. And the optic nerve carries impulses to the brain. Once again, these are the functions of the structures of the eye. Next, let's learn about the pupil reflex. The pupil reflex is an involuntary response of the eye to changes in light intensity. So it's an automatic reaction of the eye to changes in the amount of light entering it and helps control the amount of light entering it. So when there is a bright light or light intensity is higher, the pupil diameter gets smaller or narrows to allow less light to enter the eye to protect the retina from getting damaged. When the pupil gets smaller, we say that it constricts. When there is dim light or low light intensity, the pupil diameter gets larger or widens to allow more light to enter the eye and improve vision in dimly lit environments. When the pupil gets larger, we say that the pupil dilates. So how does the pupil reflex take place? The pupil reflex happens due to the actions of the antagonistic muscles in the iris, which are the circular muscles and the radial muscles. 
antagonistic muscles are pairs of muscles that work in opposition to each other to produce movement in the body. When one muscle contracts, the other relaxes. So in bright light, radial muscles relax, circular muscles contract, causing the pupil to narrow or constrict, allowing less light in. In dim light, radial muscles contract, so circular muscles relax, it does the opposite action, causing the pupil to widen or dilate, thereby allowing more light in. Next, accommodation. Accommodation is the function of the eye that helps to change its focus on near and distant objects. When an object is near, the ciliary muscles contract, tension in the suspensory ligaments is lower, so suspensory ligaments are relaxed or slackened, the shape of the lens is thicker and the refraction of light by lens is more to focus on the near object. This means that the light is bent more. When an object is far away, the ciliary muscles relax, the tension in the suspensory ligaments is higher, so suspensory ligaments are pulled tight or stretched, pulling the lens and making it thinner. So the shape of the lens becomes thinner. Therefore, the refraction of light is less, allowing the light to focus on a distant object. Light rays coming from a distance will be almost parallel. So they need to be refracted less. There are two types of receptor cells in the retina. Rods and cones. Rods are used for night vision in dim light. Cones are used for color vision in bright light. There are three different kinds of cones which are sensitive to different colors of light. That is red, blue and green. Rod cells are found all over the retina except at the blind spot and fovea. Almost all of the cone cells are found at the fovea. So cone cells are concentrated at the fovea. So once again, rod cells are found all over the retina except at the blind spot and fovea. So this is the blind spot, the area where the optic nerve leaves the eye and there are no photoreceptor cells here, neither rods nor cones. And this is the fovea. It contains only cone cells. There are no rod cells here. You are expected to identify in diagrams and images the position of the fovea. So this is the fovea. The fovea is a small part of the retina in the eye that helps us see fine details and colors clearly. It has a high concentration of cone cells that are packed tightly together to give us sharp vision. So that concludes part 2 of chapter 14, Coordination and Response. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more biology revision videos. Bye.